We have carrots growing, we have carrots growing. Guys, I'm having a disaster and I'm so upset because it was going so well. <laughs> Since I got here, those birds have been snooping around waiting for me to bugger off. Oh, please just be normal. <laughs> Good morning guys, welcome back to my allotment diaries. My name is Emma, these are my allotment diaries and I would love for you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you are new, every subscriber makes a massive difference to my channel and the stats and everything. So I'd just love you to follow my journey. If you're into allotment gardening or vegetable gardening or any kind of gardening really, where did he go? Would it surprise you to hear this morning I'm being stalked by Robin? <laughs> oh, there he is, he's up there. Yeah, he heard me coming and he's uh, waiting for his food. So the first thing we're gonna do is quickly feed Einstein and his uh, girlfriend. Are you just very, very hungry today? <laughs> what would you do without me? running out of these again I'm sorry seriously you need to slow down mate oh there's been a snail in there there you are enjoy right foxes is becoming an issue guys um which is I hate saying that because I actually genuinely really like this fox I think he's quite a nice looking fox I think he's quite all right as far as foxes go I think he's all right but He's, he keeps digging everything up. I assume it's him that's done this again. Um, it might have been the weather, but I think it's Foxy. I think I'm just gonna uncover it. I don't know what else to do. I feel like it's just gonna be an ongoing battle that's gonna drive me crazy. So. Yeah, look, it's crushing all my garlic. It's so annoying, that fox. Because all my garlic's getting flattened which is a bit frustrating. It's just doing so well. I think it's just because he keeps pulling that thing down, all the cover down on it. Um, I think we're just gonna leave it uncovered. I wish I could like talk to him and reason with him and just ask him not to do it, but I feel bad as well because I sort of chopped down all of his home over there because I think he was living over there. So I don't really know what to do, but he is becoming a bit of a problem, isn't he Einstein? Well, I wouldn't mind it if he just ate the slugs and snails, but um, he doesn't. He likes to dig in my beds as well. Yeah, I had um, a panic attack yesterday. Not a panic attack, but I was panicking because I uncovered my broad beans and I was really scared that um, all the birds would get them. They seem to be okay. I think most of them are okay. Um, but I forgot that birds like these and I uncovered them thinking, oh, I've got strolch for the slugs, but actually it's the birds, so you have to watch. Right, so we now officially have got the spinach coming up really well, but we've also got the beetroot, which has started to germinate. Can't see the parsnips yet, but that's okay. They normally take a bit longer. Um, but yeah, the beetroot's starting to, uh, to sprout. I love that word, sprout. Look at this. Look, he's sprouted from his seed. So we've got a few of them coming up there, but it's the spinach that's really the winner. It's done absolutely fantastic. So I think I'm gonna leave the cover off just for now, just while I'm here and I'll cover it up later. I don't know what that will do. I feel like it will air them out a bit. I just feel like they've been under cover for a long time. If I'm under a duvet cover for a long time, I feel like I'd want some air, some fresh air, you know? So I'm just gonna give them some fresh air. That just feels the right thing to do. Right, let's check the carrots. I doubt we've got any carrots coming up. It's like we're playing who's alive and who's died again. I miss that game. Oh, oh, hello carrots. Oh, hello carrots. <laughs> we do have them. We do have little teeny tiny carrots coming up. Wow, they've actually germinated. I can't believe it. And Fox has been digging in here and everything. And they're still germinating. This is great. We have carrots growing. We have carrots growing. I might actually stick some more in there just because, I don't know, I just feel like I want to keep reseeding it now oh wow it's amazing okay so we've got carrots we've got spinach and we've got beetroot good start i will cover these back up straight away because the thing about carrot seeds is they're so small they dry out really quickly so it's a good idea to keep them covered 
um, not just for the warmth, but to keep them moist as well. I don't want them to dry out, because then they really will die. Right, so the job of the day is to plant out some brassicas. I actually brought some brassica plants. I'm not actually sowing a lot from seed this year. I'm sowing a lot of my pumpkins from seed. Um, and I've got a few other things at home that are gonna go from seed. But because I don't have that much room, I'm buying a lot of plug plants. And also I've got a lot more space to kind of fill this year. So I'm feeling the pressure a bit. And I thought to take the pressure off myself, I would plant a lot by plug plants and put in a lot of kind of perennial kind of plants so I'm thinking like strawberries and all the fruit bushes and stuff like that to try and sort of set the base does that make any sense I mean it's not cheating it's still going to grow into something hopefully I've still got to keep it alive so you know it's half the battle most of the battle actually keeping it alive <laughs> I've got broccoli which is just the marathon f1 that's what it looks like I've got some Savoy cabbage, my absolute favourite cabbage. Such a beautiful plant and also so fun to grow and delicious. And I got some pak choy for the slugs <laughs> because they love this and there's no way I'm going to be able to protect it, but I'm going to give it a go. So, oh God, I've just knocked them all off. I've just killed them all. <laughs> just killed them. It's fine, they're, they're fine. Right, they're going to go in the big bed over there. So first thing we're going to do is weed it, make sure it's you know viable to accept plants viable to accept plants god it's like i'm writing a book right so guys the main reason why i'm going to put my brassicas in this bed here is because it gets quite shady here and brassicas can actually survive a little bit in the shade they don't need as much sun it does get sun but not as much as the front of the, at the back of the plot because obviously i'm absolutely surrounded by trees here at the front of the plot and they just cast so much shade and shadow onto the front of the plot so it never gets full sun all day long ever um, in any season so I thought brassicas would be quite good here. Right, you two, I don't know what you're waiting for, but you are hanging around here and I don't trust you. It's always birds, it's always birds you've got to watch. Look at these two. They're no, look at him, hopping. <sighs> he's still there, I know he's still there, I can see him. He thinks I can't see him, I can. I can see you. They were not interested at all, they weren't even here. The second I start laying brassicas down, they turn up. Honestly, you sometimes you think, oh, it's slugs and snails, that's my biggest challenge, and it's not. It's actually them, it's the birds. They can fly and everything, you know? They're like slugs with wings. Right, this is what I've done so far. So I've laid everything down where I want to plant it. Looks a bit like a brassic graveyard at the moment. It's like they've all been uprooted and they've just lying there dying. Uh, but <laughs> I haven't planted them in any particular sort of rows or anything. So they're all together. So like, this is pak choy. This is a cabbage and this is a broccoli. They're just all sort of scattered. I don't know why I feel like they'd be happier like that. I just do. Oh, I know what I mean. What I mean is if I planted all the broccoli in a row, pak choy in a row, cabbage in a row, and a slug finds one row and it devours the entire thing, that's a whole crop I've lost. Whereas if I plant them all like iggledy piggledy everywhere and the slug eats a whole row he's gonna have one of everything i mean it'd be like a lovely buffet for the slug he'll love it he'll be happy i'll be happy because i'll still have one of each crop growing somewhere hopefully that's the idea you see what i mean so there is logic to the madness sometimes
looks so good at the moment. It's such a shame to put strokes down and kind of ruin, ruin the look of it all, but they look amazing. What a happy, happy brassica bed. I just remembered that I brought some oregano seed with me because I read that slugs and snails don't like the smell of oregano and I know this would take a while to grow and smell but I thought I'd wax them in around the brassicas and see if that helps this year because um, I've got loads of packs of this at home and I don't really use oregano to be honest, I don't really grow it or cook it but I've got loads of seeds like from magazines and stuff so I've got a Sutton's seeds and I've got a Mr Fothergill's pack pack of seeds for uh, oregano so let's just whack that in and see who knows it might it might be the difference between my brassicas surviving and not this year we've got to try everything guys we've just got to try everything <laughs> just the idea being scatter them where's the pack are they just in there oh cool yeah the idea being just to sort of I don't know like a little row there you know it straight from the pack actually, a bit rebel. Yeah, so scatter them in all around the place. Right, so I've just randomly scattered oregano seeds sort of in and among the brassicas. I don't know if that'll work. I thought it was worth a try, why not? Um, and then we're gonna strolch them as best we can and cover the whole thing with netting. So let's do that. Right, so the net that I'm using to net over all the brassicas is from Andermatt Home and Garden. This is not an advert, but I have worked with them before in the past. It's called Insectonet. Um, it's completely natural, it's plastic free, which does mean that it will kind of biodegrade and rot down, um, but it takes about two years before you have to replace it. It keeps out things like the butterflies that lay their caterpillar eggs, um, lots of aphids and stuff like that. It keeps all that out, but it also allows in the rain and it allows airflow um, through it. So that's good, that's good, that's a good thing. Air is good. We've already, you know, talked about air and plants. Um, but yeah, <laughs> this is the net I'm using and I, I really rate it. So if you're looking for a really good plastic free, eco friendly net, go with the Insecto net from Andermatt Home and Garden. I will link it below if you want to go check it out. But I don't know if it's going to fit this. This is my biggest ever brassica bed. So, oh no, it is absolutely massive. It is massive, okay, this should be okay. Right, it doesn't quite fit across, so I have to make a, the structure a little bit smaller. Right, this is Emma attempting to put a net over a brassica cage, take two. Guys, I'm having a disaster and I'm so upset because it was going so well. <laughs> and now it looks like this. Why does it look like this? I'm, I'm trying to make it smaller so that the netting goes all the way to the bottom. Oh, what is happening? It's an absolute nightmare. It looks like that caterpillar toy that's gone wrong. I don't know what toy I even mean. Ugh, every job I think I'm gonna do here always takes like five times longer because there's some kind of problem I did not foresee. I did not foresee this problem. It makes it a bigger problem. I've got to use a saw and everything, it's awful. I don't even know how to saw this, like where to... There, I guess. Right. You should be smaller now, but why do you go weird when I do that? Why are you... No, you're fine. Right, good. That'd be the right size now. I think I'm going to throw you away. No, you're the right size. Good, well done. Right, this is Emma Bailey putting the net over a brassica structure. Take 15. <laughs> Oh, 
anyway there we go I'll just buy some pegs I think the sun's coming out the sun the sun you can actually see the sun it's a miracle right that's the brassicas in that feels pretty good getting that job done it feels like a real planting job um, and actually it doesn't look weird anymore now that I've made the structure smaller if I show you from over here Okay, it looks a tiny bit weird. <laughs> it looks a tiny bit weird, but not as weird as other things that I've made be before in the past. I think it looks okay. I might try and put some netting over this, you know. I think it needs something. Right, actually I've only got one bit of net netting that I've found, so I'm going to net my broad beans. But before I do that, I'm going to look for some... Um, blackberry canes because they're really good at deterring slugs and snails if I lay them down. Seeing as I've got quite a lot of blackberry canes around the place I might as well put them to good use and they're particularly spiky now so Slug's got no choice but to go over it. Ow! Oh, that really hurt that one. Oh, that's going to be a killer, that one. Oh. <laughs> right, this is Emma versus Net. Take 59. Since I got here, those birds have been snooping around waiting for me to bugger off. They're going to have everything, I know they are. Right, so the net's on the, uh, the broad beans. Right, well, I hope you enjoyed my little instalment of my allotment diary today. If you did, do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, I hope that your allotments are going well. I think the weather's going to drop a bit next week, so be warned. We're probably going to get some more frost and I'll be down here panicking and covering everything. But um, that's just the way it goes at this time of year, I think. Anyway, I'll see you again next time. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Happy gardening. Bye.